The original Tekken launched in arcade in 1994 and was ported to the PlayStation 1 in 1995. How was the idea for a 3D fighting game from Namco formed? <laughs> well, back in the day, you know, Namco was putting in a lot of effort into developing polygon technology, even a little bit before the PlayStation era. Uh, and so you had the, the race game and the, also like a SF shooter type of uh, game that had polygon technology implemented. And they wanted, the company that is, wanted to try to develop uh, the same kind of technology for animating uh, 3D uh, humanoid based models. So right at that time is when uh, Sega had released Virtual Fighter and so they had uh, been doing that on their side. And uh, the industry at the time had a lot more uh, fluctuation of people than it did uh, more recently. So for example people would leave our company and go to Sega, our team that was developing driving games and such. Uh, and then on the other hand, uh, from Sega, we had these guys that uh, uh, were experienced with that technology of uh, 3D character models come to our company. And they met up with uh, members from a team that had made kind of a failed attempt at a 2D fighting game. And they, they were kind of the predecessor of Tekken. And uh, so the focus was really to try to create a new fighting game, but uh, with 3D polygon-based uh, character models. The Tekken games have remained popular since they debuted 23 years ago in arcades. So what do you attribute this phenomenal success? Well, part of it is probably because of the arcade roots. I mean, Street Fighter and some other fun games also have roots of the arcade, but just the business model that you spend 100 yen, which is like one US dollar each time that you play a game, uh, kind of value that uh, the customer expects, you know, what kind of experience they take home with them, or what kind of emotion the game evoked while they're playing it. Uh, these kind of things are really important to the, the game itself. And uh, being able to, to glean the data, not just uh, sales data, and et cetera, from the individual machines and, and such. Uh, Namco had you know, a large chain of arcades that we could directly uh, get feedback from, whether it's the employees, about uh, how people are playing the game, or, uh, how they're enjoying it, what kind of uh, reactions they do. Uh, all of this data was uh, collected and we were able to reference it for uh, building the game. And uh, nowadays you have like big data or stuff like that that you can draw on and a lot of the social games on uh, mobile platforms, etc. kind of alter their game design or decide what kind of contents to add uh, by looking at what the users are doing in the game. So the fact that we were kind of able to do this uh, a long time ago uh, was maybe a key factor to the maintenance of the, popula uh, the popularity of the title. Tekken 6 released almost 10 years ago, and since then the world of esports and competitive gaming has exploded with popularity. Do you see Tekken 7 as being a potential esport title? Well, it's interesting that uh, esports is such a, a buzzword recently. Uh, because, you know, fighting games have had a competitive scene in tournaments and such for many, many years before eSports became a, a word. So, uh, with that in, in mind, I guess you could say that we never really focus on eSports. Uh, you know, Tekken's always been a competitive title. Uh, to continue to make it so uh, is one thing that we've always strived for. So, I mean, I guess you could say that there are some elements that have been added that make the uh, spectating experience even more exciting than it used to be uh, so that they can kind of get a feeling of what the, the players themselves are experiencing in the match whether it's the super slow motion or the rage arts that kind of show more visually where the tide of the match is going to turn etc uh, that combined with for example the online mode the online tournament mode uh, it's the first time it's been in Tekken uh, these are kind of things that have been made to enhance that experience so I guess you could say fighting games are maybe the predecessor of these sports. And so we hope that uh, the community will uh, still enjoy playing our game in a competitive atmosphere. And then uh, to enhance that experience with the new features that we're adding is really the, the goal of, uh, behind what we're doing. Tekken 7 originally released in arcades in March 2015. What upgrades to the experience can console players expect when it launches in June later? Well, the game, as you said, launched in arcades, and this has always been the case with uh, Tekken, but, uh, you know, we've been able to polish the game and uh, 
console release of Tekken have always seen uh, a large amount of uh, content added from the arcade version. The arcade version is basically just you know the versus fighting element in the, the roster. But when you see the console release, you always see a bunch of modes and other features added. The same in this case, uh, we came out with a game, and partway through it was updated with, for example, uh, Akuma and other uh, gameplay elements and such. And that again will see its way uh, into the console version uh, in a polished state with a high level of quality and gameplay, and all the other stuff that's going to be added for the console. So uh, it's probably more than a lot of the competitors can do because we have that extra time in the arcade. Tekken 7 will have a range of post-launch downloadable content that aims to extend the Tekken 7 experience, including costumes, but also a new game mode. Can you give us a hint at what that game mode might be? <laughs> so, I congratulate you. You've actually looked into it and you know what the DLC plan is, which a lot of people don't. Uh, so, there is the character and the costumes that you mentioned and the mystery mode. Uh, but we're not quite really ready to reveal anything about that yet. Uh, we hope that you'll wait a little bit longer because we don't want to just you know, explain it in text or, or stuff like that, but to actually have something to show about the mode before we reveal anything. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> Similar question. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can tell me about the PlayStation VR content? That we can do. <laughs> Well, we can say that many people in the here of VR think that it's just going to be Tekken in first person, but uh, that's not the case. Uh, if you ever have tried something similar or imagine having someone uh, do all this shadow boxing in front of you, uh, it's not a very enjoyable experience. So we focus more on the character aspect in that you can kind of view your char favorite character being customized, etc. Or what's even cooler is the, the sub mode that allows you to fight against a CPU character and you can see the game in slow motion from various angles and actually exactly what the character's animations are doing. Uh, kind of like you know, two figures are fighting in front of you, but in a larger scale. So it's really cool, but uh, you know, explanation doesn't do it justice. It's cooler if you can actually experience it for yourself. So we hope you have the chance to play it. Uh, it's been said that Street Fighter's Arkham plays a vital role in the narrative of Tekken 7. What made you feel that Arkham was a perfect fit for the Tekken universe? Oh, not the Arkham. Hmm. Come picking up much up on that. So, the decision was made maybe seven years ago that, you know, I mean, of course the look of the character, the fighting style, etc. were very uh, impressive, but uh, when Intelink came to the story was that it would be so cool as a fighting game fan that you, know, you have Street Fighter as kind of like the godfather of fighting games and to have that character actually linked story-wise to, to our franchise is something that was very cool uh, from the staff's perspective. And when we were thinking about it, just it was such a perfect match because when you think of what makes Tekken, Tekken it's, it's kind of like these very powerful fighters, but you know there are a lot of bad boys in there too. So. Uh, in that aspect, uh, Akuma really matches it, Goki in Japan, but Akuma in the West, right? Uh, because, you know, he's very strong, but uh, has that kind of bad element to him. And uh, that, the kind of feeling that uh, you have these martial artists, but even in Tekken we have, uh, you know, people with powers from the devil gene, etc. These kind of, uh, kind of powers that uh, go over the normal abilities of humans. And Akuma does as well, so he was kind of a perfect match. Uh, and it just clicked for everyone on the team. Do you personally have a favorite character? <laughs> as a character, definitely Heihachi Mishima, you know, the story setting, background, etc. Uh, just playing the game would be Fenway uh, for the past two or three installments. The Tekken games have such a unique roster of characters. How do you approach creating new ones? The way these characters were introduced uh, really kind of changed throughout the history of the franchise. For example, the first was kind of like what kind of character models could you use with the uh, polygon limitations of the technology at the time. 
And then it went from you know martial arts inspired base because of the interest in uh, matches between two different uh, martial arts styles, etc. And then from then it kind of graduated on to uh, characters based on you know, gameplay as a fighting game. What kind of addition would be cool? To more recently, maybe a more community-based approach about uh, looking around the globe at the places that where Tekken is popular. Uh, what kind of character would appeal to these these types of groups? Uh, it's probably the more recent uh, influence on designing characters. Uh, some of Tekken's characters have been inspired by real-life martial artists. Uh, <laughs> so Bruce Lee inspired martial law. Mm. Um, Lei Wulong was inspired by Jackie mm, Chan, mm, and mm. I believe uh, Bob was inspired a lot by Samuel Fung. Oh, I got more. Yeah, close. Uh, Bob wasn't really inspired by Samuel Fung, though. Oh. Different concept, yeah. Are there any other influences on the characters from real life people that fans might have missed? Uh, it's hard to really mention a particular person that a certain character might be based on, so often we just leave that to the imagination of the fans. Uh, there is one that hasn't been implemented that's quite popular that's uh, had an influence on the team. Uh, you mentioned Bruce Lee, but the, there was a famous uh, opponent of his that uh, appeared in one of his movies, uh, Chuck Norris. has actually been brought up quite often in the team, but uh, for some mysterious reason it's never really been implemented in, in some, some way. So that's uh, one thing that hasn't, it's been a big influence, but hasn't been seen uh, more directly. That would be amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> but, you know, more recently, I guess, Chuck Norris has become famous for the fans that come up with the facts. You know, he's so strong, he could yeah. do this or that, that if he were in our game, he'd probably end up killing all the Tekken characters just because he's so strong. <laughs> with one kick. Well, Taylor Swift was debut at the time, but I always liked it. For example, Harada is a big Taylor Swift fan from her debut, but even though he's been inspired so much, it hasn't seen its way into Tekken in any manner. So. I know so many people that would absolutely love that too. My friend out there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Anakin, a famous U.S. player, is a big fan too. Ah, so that's it. That's good. <laughs> we might have covered this, but who would be your dream guest character if you can have any video game character oh. in Tekken? Definitely would be uh, Captain Price from the Call of Duty yeah. series. Uh, he's a PC gamer, so if you played PC versions, you can see that uh, Captain Price actually appears in one and two, and he's uh, you know it's not quite common for a FPS character to be so. Uh, fleshed out as a character and to be able to, to stand alone like that. So, and not only is he a very tough soldier, but very good hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat as well. So he would, uh, he would be a very good uh, addition to our game. So if you get a chance to go to Activision Era, play, uh, <coughs> say, yeah, uh, Harada wanted to put him in Tekken. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be tweeting them nonstop. Okay. <laughs> Tekken has had its fair share of spin-off titles, including card games and a standalone action title called Death by Degrees. Do you think we'll ever see another spin-off title in the Tekken universe? There's always a, a chance, you know, with a big franchise like this. Uh, card Battle proved to be really uh, popular in Europe, also Russia, uh, but for some reason not so much in Asia. So we've seen that uh, the way certain spin-offs might uh, resonate within different uh, regions or, or audiences is quite different, so uh, next time we'd like to see something that maybe resonates a little bit more worldwide. And then just before I leave, uh, okay. I'd like to thank you both again, thank you very much. Um, I've played Tekken since I was very young, so this is a dream come true oh, for me as a journalist. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Um, um, I was wondering if we might be able to quickly get Harada san to autograph. I have some Funko Pops. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, the ones that just came Funko. out. Funko. Yes. Oh, nice. I like okay. them. Funko. 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 It's the first one he'll sign. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just know that's going to make a fan yeah. come, uh, their dream come true as well. So I'll just quickly cool. grab them. Let's see what you got. So they created me for you. I'm going to get a chance 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 to